This is part 38 of Angular 2 tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss using promises instead of observables in Angular 2. In Angular, we can use either promises or observables. The Angular built-in HTTP service by default returns an observable. Let's actually prove this. Let's flip over to Visual Studio. This is the employee service that we have built in one of our previous video series. And notice here we have a method get employee by code. So we provided an employee code and this method is going to return us that specific employee. And to make a call to our web server, we are using the built-in Angular HTTP service. And here we are using the get method to issue a get request. And look at what this get method returns from the IntelliSense. It returns an observable. Let's actually go to its definition. And then if we look at the return type of this method, look at that, it's observable. So by default, the Angular built-in HTTP service returns an observable. Now for us to be able to use promises instead of observables, we will have to modify this get employee by code method to return a promise instead of an observable. The changes that we have to do are pretty straightforward. The first step is to import the two promise rxjs operator and this is very similar to how we have imported the other rxjs operators like map, catch, throw, etc. Now once we have the two promise operator imported, we then change the return type of this method. At the moment, our get employee by code method is returning an observable of i employee, but we now want this method to return a promise of i employee. So we change the return type of the method from observable of i employee to promise of i employee. And then we use the two promise operator that we have imported to transform the observable to a promise. And then with the catch operator here, we use a different error handling function and there is a specific reason for that. We'll discuss that in just a bit. Now let's change this get employee by code method to return a promise instead of an observable. So first let's import to promise rxjs operator and then let's change the return type of this method from observable to a promise. And notice when we do this, this actually is going to show some red squiggly lines here. That's because we said the return type of this method is a promise. But we know this get method is going to return an observable. So what we are returning from this method does not match with the return type that we have specified. So we will have to convert this observable that this get method is returning to a promise. And to do that, we are going to make use of this to promise operator that we have imported. So let's use the to promise operator. And now these red squiggly should go away. There we go. So we said the return type is promise and this operator is going to convert the observable to a promise and we're going to return that. Finally, we have to deal with the errors that occur. At the moment we have this error handling function right here, handle error. And if you look at what we are doing here, we are logging the error to the console and then we are throwing that error back so we can handle that error within the client code where we are consuming this service and then display a meaningful message to the end user. But here we are using the throw method of the observable and if you look at this throw method of the observable, it's actually returning an error observable. But right here, we are dealing with a promise, so we don't have to use the throw method of the observable. So let's make a copy of this function. And I'm actually going to change the name of this to handle promise error. You can give it any meaningful name you want. And since here we are dealing with a promise, we don't have to use the observable. So I'm going to get rid of that. And we are just going to use throw to throw that error back so we can handle that error within the client code where we are consuming this service method. Now to the catch method here, let's pass our new method handle promise error. So these are all the changes required within our employee service to return a promise instead of an observable. Now let's look at the changes required within the client code that is within our employee component where we are consuming this employee service. Notice here we are calling get employee by code method of the employee service. This method was returning an observable but now we have changed it to return a promise. With an observable, we use the subscribe method to subscribe to the observable. But now this method is returning a promise. So instead of using subscribe, we use then method. 
that is the only change that we have to do within our employee component where we are consuming this get employee by code method that returns a promise instead of an observable. Here is our employee component where we are consuming get employee by code method of the employee service. Notice here we already have a red squiggly and when I hover the mouse over look at what it says property subscribe does not exist on type promise of employee. Now we know this get employee by code is returning a promise and not an observable. So we can't use the subscribe method. Instead we use then method. And if you look at this then method it has got two parameters. Let me actually right click on that and go to the definition. Here is the first parameter. The first parameter is the callback function to notify when the promise is fulfilled. Meaning when the request is completed successfully what is the callback function to call. That's what we specify as the first parameter. And the second parameter is right here. When the promise is rejected what is the callback function to notify. And we are passing both those callback functions as parameters to this then method. Here is our first callback function, the success callback function and here is our error callback function. Now this is one way of doing this. There is another way as well. Instead of passing both the success and error callback functions to then method like this, we can use the catch method instead. So I'm going to cut this error callback function from here. So I'm going to specify only success callback function to then method and then here is where we are closing that then method. So here I'm going to use catch method and to this I'm going to pass our error callback function. So if you look at this catch method and if we go to the definition on this, this catch method has got only one parameter, the callback function to notify when the promise is rejected. That is if there is an error processing the request, what is the error callback function to call and we are passing that right here to the catch method. So let's save all these changes and reload this web page. Notice here we are requesting for an employee whose employee code is EMP103 and we see that specific employee right here. Now if we request for an employee whose employee code does not exist then we expect to see this message employee with the specified employee code does not exist. So when we issue a request for employee with EMP109, notice we see that message employee with the specified employee code does not exist. On the other hand, if there is an error processing the request, then we want to see this message problem with the service, please try again after some time. So this is the error callback function. If there is any error processing the request, we expect to see that message. And to raise an error, what I'm going to do is introduce an extra S here within the service URL so we get an exception. Now with these changes, let's reload this web page one more time. And now we see that message, problem with the service, please try again after some time. So all of our use cases are working exactly the same way as before. Now we are using a promise instead of an observable. So using a promise we are able to do all that an observable can do. So the question that comes to our mind is what is the difference between a promise and an observable? There are several differences. We'll discuss those differences in detail in our next video. Thank you for listening and have a great day.